Hello, folks, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. Here in Charessa's Caress, just reported a murder. Uh, apparently, there's someone from the hells around here. We've got to talk about that for sure. That's a fist. She probably doesn't care. She probably works here. What about the bartender? Bartenders know everything, right? Now, that there's a face I'd remember if I'd seen it. Welcome to Charesse's Caress. That's a hell of a way to what say it. What can hoots do for you, stranger? You got a taste for ale, I reckon. Or maybe... Ah, forget it. My new brew could drop you in the wink of a spectator's eye. All right. Um, yeah, I bet you hear all sorts of stories. My business is slinging tankards, not hoarding secrets. I'd like to keep it that way. But you poke some folk hard enough, they're bound to squeal. And Mamzelle Amira there looks about ready to burst. Interesting. All right. Thank you. Uh, your new bro sounds potent. I'd like to give that a try. Don't know about that, chum. Hoots Hooch packs a stronger wallop than all ten of my knuckles. Could beef you up, sharpen your tongue, or knock you out cold. No telling till the first drop hits your gullet. I mean, that sounds kind of tempting. Damn. The man knows what he wants. First one's on the ass. So, don't come bawling to me if your big toes fall off or your tongue coils in a knot. All right, what is the story of this place? Charest Caress, the mamsel's brainchild. Wet your tongue, soak your skin, scratch your itch. Get the attention you want and avoid the attention you don't. All right, what else you got? Have a look. Okay, so you've got wine up the frickin' wazoo. You've also got an amulet. Amulet of the Drunkard. Okay, so if we were doing a drunken monk build for Karlak, and we could spec her into that now. She's the monk. This is actually kind of tempting to try out. The thing is, I don't know what it takes to be drunk. Hmm. And we could try it. I think there's a couple other things we need for this to work, but we can spend the gold. I mean, the gold's not really a problem. All right, let's go ahead and buy this just so we can use it later. Go ahead and sell the wares. Thank you. All set, are you? All right, I think we're all set. Yep, we're good. She did not actually give me a drink, or is that actually it on the table? No, she just picked it up. All right, never mind. I thought she gave me one in the house, but maybe not. Human citizen. Um, ear spoon. Okay, so these are the guys who were talking. These are shady characters. The two men bark softly to each other. A single name reaches your ears. Nine fingers. All right, see if perception works here. I've got a decent-ish now, the jack of all trades, but still with guidance, maybe. 15, maybe not, even with guidance. Yeah, that means I have to roll at least a 12. This might not work. Okay, no, no, there you go, there you go. You rats with the guild now. Heard nine fingers met a match. The new kingpin? All meat and muscle, that one. And wild as a werebear. If he's looking to house nine fingers, my blade's got his back. Sounds messy as the ninth hell. Must be why she called us to help. Is that right? The way I heard it, you Zent cut a deal with the new. Hold on. Has he noticed? You there! Getting up in our affairs! All right, I've got a really good persuasion here, so I'm going to try this. Sounds like an interesting business. I like to take part. Um, you know, with an 18, I will totally roll friends here. We need as much help as we can get. This is a tough roll. Nat 
20. There you go. But only with advantage. Without advantage, I would not have gotten that. So worth it. Look, this subject's not safe. You selling your services, beat feet to the guild hall. Lower city, basilisk gate, guild hall. And that's all you're getting from me. Good enough. Now, scrum. The chat's officially closed. All right. Still good to know, though. All right. So we definitely helped out that. Uh, you're just random citizens? Yep. Okay. That's fine. You are also just a random citizen. You are a random citizen. Oh, uh, this guy. Okay. We definitely need to talk to you, Valera. You're, like, way wrong on this whole investigating murder thing. Another case closed, another bottle open. Huzzah to Valeria! <laughs> Hang on a sec. I recognize that face. You were talking to Yanis after I left the temple. That's right. I'll bet she's put you up to something. Sort of. I'm afraid so. I found a new investigator. Or new evidence. I should find a new investigator, to be honest, but no. I found new evidence, investigator. Why must you busybodies insist on interrupting a perfectly good night? <sighs> I know that look. You remind me of Devella. Fine. If you doubt my conclusions, out with it. What have you found? All right. Yeah, well, I mean, there's the whole speak with dead. Do you not actually have that spell? He was killed by a dwarf dressed in red, not Brilgore. That doesn't make sense. Why would this dwarf kill Father Logan? I need something more than vague allegations. Vague allegations I want from something the person compelling. who was murdered? Hard, tangible evidence, and nothing less. I will frickin' harvest your tusk for ivory. All right, so, look... There's another body. It's totally related because it has the same signature. <gasps> You're telling me more than one person has been killed in Baldur's Gate? You must have something better than that. I will freaking harvest I your need ears. hard evidence and a motive. Why would someone else kill Lorgan? How can we be sure it wasn't Brilgor? All right. I mean, it's part of a bigger plot. A ball plot. A Baal plot. You as well. Devella's been harping on about Baal for months. Fancies herself something of an expert. I assumed it was just a bunch of conspiracy codswallop and fear-mongering. But she's been unusually insistent about this one, even for her. <sighs> Fine. I'll bite. What's your theory? Yes, not a theory. I have proof. This document contains information connecting the murderers to a Baal's resurgence. No need to wave documents at me. I'm already drowning in paperwork as it is. Constable Devella is going to be a real pain in the trunk about this. Since you seem to be on an obnoxiously similar wavelength, why don't you seek her out? She'll be at the Elf Song Tavern. Show her the list, and I'll stay and inform the Fist here. Oh, and you'll need this pass. It'll give you access to the lower city. They put a lot of work into animating well, that drink. What are you waiting for? You've a bloody conspiracy to solve. Move. All right. At least he believed us. That's something. Not a lot, but it's something. Okay, random citizen. We're going to talk to you. We did at least get a lower pass, so we don't really need it anymore. Because now Gortash kind of gave us run of the city. But all right. Okay, random citizens. Random citizen. Uh, random door. Oh, a door. Oh, it leads outside. Um, upstairs? Nope, just random. And more random citizens. Okay. Hang out this way. More random citizens. And random citizen. Random citizen. And a way downstairs so I do not want. No, I think we still want to stay inside stress stress. I think we got an upstairs around here somewhere. Yeah, here we go. Does the hand not just uh, upper floor or anything here? Oh, this leads back outside. Uh, but secret rooms, maybe. This is locked, but not for long. As one does. 
I don't even think we need the guidance. I mean, we might as well go ahead and do it, though, right? Okay. Didn't even need it. We're good. Nobody actually in here, which is a little weird, but okay. Uh, let's see. We've got rules of the reading room. Okay, sure. What's the, what's the reading room say? Anyone caught fluttering themselves in the library will be tethered to the bookcase of chained books. Any wizards caught examining this special collection without the permissions permissions will be commanded to read aloud to the whole library the passenger the passages they were enjoying. Anyone breaking the silence of the library will be promptly gagged. Okay, how do you enforce that, though? The Rose Books. Anything good in here? Hunter's Piercing Gaze. Let me guess. Horn. Pamphlet is a transcript of an increasingly feral debate between two admirers on whether the color of Drizzt Jordan's eye color is aquamarine, cerulean, vermilion, or amber. Now, the thing is, so if you don't know who Drizzt is, there is a set of books set in the Faerun universe about a drow trying to redeem himself, basically. Um, and he's very popular for, like, I don't know, 30 books or so. Publication describes itself in the introduction. A semi-annual magazine of drawings and tales telling stories of famed heroes of Baldur's Gate by their admirers open to submissions from the public. Alright, we had that to work. So not... Okay. Surgical bed. That's a weird addition in a library, but okay. I mean, so is the bed, though. Uh, not the candle, not the bed, not the... No, no, no. I want the freaking books, though. Come on. Come on, Rosa Books, right there. Good, good. Harping by Moonlight. An approach to life. Battlemaster, I'm under a sage of Shatterdale. The text is rife with observation and personal introspection, such as this. Never understood why people talk about evil as if it's a point of view. I find that tawdry and stupid. Evil and good are as present in our world as gravity. And though their interpretation is displaced across the global noise of culture, they actually remain reasonably constant. Just because you've cast fly doesn't mean you've broken gravity. Even the god who gives a cleric her power is just a flu down which the smoke of god good flows. Sometimes I wish we lived somewhere in which these things weren't as omnipotent as they are. No matter how long you study, you can't grovel smoke. I've tried to understand good, to realize it in our world. More and more often as I get older, I feel it flowing through my fingers. Which isn't to say the things we do are meaningless. We may be puppets toked and strobbed around by good and evil. We can jerk on the strings a little. I'm not sure you would appreciate life where things are more ambiguous, though. Like, you always want you don't have, right? Then these books. Yoshimo is willing. A revisionist sensilla, sensation novella with a blurb. In this alternate history sixth adventure, the one and only Yoshimo does not betray the ball spawn. In fact, he does almost everything the ball spawn asks for very readily. Okay, so basically, smut. Good now. Now that to wears, people are always looking for smut to buy. One Night in Nashville. The cover of this pulp erotica describes the contents. After months of imprisonment in the Nashville mines, Enchanter Zan cannot bear a solitude any longer and decides to pleasure himself with the only companion he has, his sentient sword, the Moonblade. Ow. Ow. Um, I'm pretty sure that would also be deadly, but what do I know? Okay, bathhouse with some more books. Uh, not the incense, not the candle, not the mirror. Books apparently are not selectable. Alright. What about inside the wardrobe? A strapped choker leather outfit. Okay. Um, no, we're not going to be doing that. Okay, so last set of books. The one that got a fay. Get it? Get it? The texture written on the back of this smut advertises it. A slow-paced enemies to lovers tale featuring a bitter arch wizard of fay and his nemesis, a pure-hearted muscled berserker. Of course. Of course. Out of course. Alright. So nothing really good in here. There is a merchant... Oh, down below. That's probably the bartender. Uh, ladder. Yes, Take the ladder. Very... <clears throat> oh, just the roof. I was not expecting to go to the roof today. Uh, is there any reason to be up here? I don't think so. I mean, it's kind of neat to be able to go on the roof, but not actually where I want to be right now. Uh, there's apparently a whole other room there I've not seen, so let's go back downstairs. So that's the library. What 
about this room over here. Just opens up, great. Someone can be set free. Oh, you must hear me, devil. It's I will do whatever it takes. Give you anything you ask. There is only one thing in this world that I desire. You do not have it, and you never will. The Kithrak. What deal would he make with this devil? Good question. You must help me, Raphael, for the sake of my people. Hush now, Voss. These guests may not know it yet, but they want the same thing that you do. And unlike you, they have something of value to offer in return. Lazel, Talak Magir. The devil holds the key to freeing the Gith people. Right here, right now. You could seal our fate. Whatever you discuss with this devil, I must hear of it. Find me below in the tap room once you're loosed from his claws. Interesting that he's not going to stay for this conversation. I'm glad you came. Not to my door. Not yet. But to the final reckoning. One more thing before we begin, though. Uh, how was that? Do you teleport us somewhere? For the first time since the Nautiloid, your mind is clear. It's unsettling. I feel empty. What did you do? I gave you back your privacy by shutting that illithid in your pocket out of your mind. It can't hear us. Neat trick. Yeah, clever. When you first met, though, you promised me a cure, and this ain't it. I'd ask you to be patient, but you've been patient enough. Now is the time to speak plain. It's about fucking time. I'll admit. You've impressed me. I wasn't sure you'd make it this far. I mean, admittedly, but no matter we how it. far you come, you're still on the road to ruin. A road that leads directly to a confrontation with the Elder Brain. That's where we're headed. Best, yeah. it will kill you and everyone else in this city. At worst, it will assimilate you, and you won't have enough free will left to even wish you were dead. Yeah, we get the stakes. You know. have the key to destroying it in the palm of your hand, though. I mean, those three are almost all the same thing, but I think it's actually Orpheus. Very perceptive. Yes. I can give you the means to break him free. Yeah, but... Speak, devil. We're listening. The thing is, if we free him, my understanding is from the Emperor is that we're instantly taken over and then, you know, the world dies. So that would be bad, right? I suppose... You'd rather suck on the Emperor's tentacles till the end of your days? Oh, no, of course not. Orpheus is your only hope of surviving this horror show without devolving into an illithid. Well, yeah, that's what I just said. To you, he will be a friend. After all, you're at war with an elder brain. Well, okay. Like, yes, a temporary friend. Gith, as far as I can tell, don't really have friends. Like, Lazelle only barely tolerates us. The only reason why she doesn't slit our throats in our sleep is because... Well, no, wait, she tried that. Um, yeah, so all the evidence I've seen suggest Orpheus is my enemy and the Emperor my ally. Unless you've got other evidence to the contrary. If I'd realized you were so gullible, I'd have tricked you into selling your soul for a pocket full of beans when we first met. Were they magic beans? To the Emperor, you are nothing more than a beast of burden. 
One that will transport it to the Elder Brain. An ox requires food and the occasional beating to keep it moving. You are simpler. The Emperor's words serve as both carrot and stick. Perhaps it is true that Orpheus would ally with you against the Elder Brain. But if he proves uncooperative once free, you may have to kill him. All right. Lazelle really wants to hear this, though. So, assuming we do this, how exactly would we go about it? The Orphic Hammer. An artifact capable of shattering the chains that hold Prince Orpheus is held securely in my House of Hope, even now. I mean, that sounds a little bit too good to be true. Good and truth rarely go hand in hand, but in this case, they are happy bedfellows, and we can be too. I swear to you, I have the solution to your problem. Okay. All right, so um, don't suppose it's just as easy as uh, me asking for it and you just handing it over, right? <laughs> Such an eager little pup. Surely you realize there is an exchange to be made. Of course. You scratch my back. I scratch your parasite. All right. The thing is, you can't have my soul. Mazora's already got it. So just tell me what you want. You says now the time to speak plainly. Why don't you actually live up to that? I... Want the crown that dominates the elder brain. Uh, what? And you, Lazel of Kalir, want to free the forgotten prince, do you not? I want nothing more. Then it is settled, is it not? A crown for a hammer. A bargain of a lifetime, Lazel of Kalir. Yeah, I'm not here to do this, Lazel. That crown to this devil will be like feeding gunpowder to a lava worm. Agree to nothing. Okay. I mean, Gale's kind of right now, right? Be insane to give such a power power to the devil, but why, 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 why in the nine realms would you be so eager to hold this crown? I have craved it ever since the archwizard Cassus created it long centuries ago and brought doom to the empire of netheril that was the great age of humanity and netheril's flying sky cities were the apex of civilization i was there the day it all fell apart entire cities plummeted from the sky like angels with broken wings the screams, oh, the screams. Hundreds of thousands of people watching in horror as the ground came up to meet them. <laughs> it was not a happy meeting, and Cassus was responsible. Not driven by malice, but by ambition. He forged a crown imbued with all the powers of magic. A crown that would make any who wore it a god. Men cannot contain so much power. The crown destroyed its creator, and his empire fell with him. Cassus's folly, the bards and scholars call it. I call it hope. The hope of creating a better world and the perils of unchecked hubris. I knew then that the folly of mortals could be the triumph of devils, and that I could use that crown to unite the Nine under one Archdevil Supreme, me. Hmm. Well, now Gail wants to talk to us, which is fair. What makes you think you should see him using the crown when Carsus couldn't? I am no mortal! And I do not fail. 
so then how come you didn't get hold of the crown way back when? When you, you said you were there. Could you not just snatch the crown from the ruins? The archdevil Mephistopheles snatched up the crown and squirreled it away in one of his vaults. He is not more than a frigid archivist. So much power and potential kept inert. He made a miracle into a museum piece. I raged. But only for a decade or so. Then I waited ever watching for more than a thousand years for a mistake a mishap a misadventure and these chosen who have caused you so much trouble accidentally did me a favor they brought the crown back into play So, did they make a deal with Mesistopheles? Like, that seems super unusual, but maybe? How did they come to do it? get it? Through the aid of a diabolist, somebody capable of opening a portal to the Hells. Deep in the Hells. They must have raided Mephistopheles' vault. Impressive. I must admit, dangerous as hell. But they'll too. be dead soon. Yeah. If you don't kill them, the elder brain will. It doesn't have feelings in the way you'd understand them. <laughs> but it seems rather angry. It is inevitable. When you destroy the brain, and you will, because you must, the crown will be yours for the taking. And when that moment comes, you give the crown to me. In exchange, I give you the hammer now. A simple transaction, it seems, but it's more than that. He's offering you an alternative to the mind flayer in your head. Take Raphael's deal and you could free Orpheus. With Orpheus free, you would have no need to rely on the Emperor. But there's no guarantee that Orpheus would be on your side. Yeah, dangerous hell. And if you take the deal, you'll have to fulfill it. You'll have to deliver the crown of Carsus to the devil himself. He claims his ambition is to unite the hells, but can he be trusted to stop there? Do you trust him more than you trust the Emperor? Squaw! We should do as the devil asks. The Prince of the Comet must rise again. Yeah, what the hell, man? I mean, there's some to the idea of, ironically enough, the devil you know. But the devil I know is not this guy. It's the Emperor. The Emperor is the one who's actually been helping us out. Oh, uh, bring Lizelle here might be a mistake, because she's going to definitely revolt if we don't do this. And we have to fight her. There's some good armor on her, on her too. Oh, uh, what the hell, man? I mean, if we do this, we just go insane and die, right? It's already been tried by a mortal. It didn't work. I mean, you have to be a pretty high-level mage to even make it. Chances are he was at least level 12, if not 20, to do it. So chances are, like, we would, our minds would shatter, everyone would die. That's probably the way it would go, because that's the way it went in the past. We're still mortal, right? There's no getting around that. So that's not happening. I'm kind of tempted to say destroy the crown. I mean, the fact that it's so powerful means very likely he will not stop at just United Nine Hells. He'd probably try to go and invade the God's Realm, come to speak, think of it. Like, that'd be really, really bad. I mean, I would rather destroy the crown than risk it. Yeah, that's probably where I'm actually more willing to go. Making a deal with this guy seems like a really, really, really bad idea. How short-sighted. Much better to put it into the right hands. Hands that will ensure it is removed from this world. And it's the only way you can ensure that you remain part of this world. And there's no way we control the crown ourselves. Like, that would just break my brain. Assuming, of course, what he said was true, which I guess is not necessarily the way to go. 
but... I mean, just because he's evil doesn't mean he's a liar, right? You can do a lot of evil with the right truth from the wrong ears. Gale is definitely against this. Lazelle is for it. Shadowheart doesn't have any opinion. I think, yeah, this is too dangerous, right? Now, granted, I'll see, the thing is, like, even if we free Orpheus, we could do it. We could totally do it. We'd have to do it once we agree, right? There's no getting out of this. He's going to make an ironclad contract. I can't believe I'm doing this again. Gale's against it. Uh, you know, we should have gone to Sorcerer Sundries first, huh? Then Gale would be able to do more research. With that research, we might be able to know more about what we're actually looking at here, but I did not do that. I came here first. It's either no deal or deal. I don't know. It seems like a really bad idea to give this guy the power in the United Nine Hells. A United Nine Hells is far worse than Divisions right now. Like, on the upside... Um, with him, I guess not really in our debt, huh? Because we would have paid it off. But with a sense of gratitude, it could mean that later on, like, he could actually find, like, a cure for Carlac. Like, there could be, like, you know, other benefits to having the leader of the Nine Hells on a first-name basis. Like, maybe. But it could also mean that he launches a war against the rest of the realms because, you know, he's bored one day. And though he's not chaotic, right? He's lawful. Otherwise, he wouldn't make deals. All right. You know what? You know what? Yeah. Let's do it. It is a betrayal of the Emperor. But I think... I mean... the Okay. So really what we're dealing with is two evils here, right? We've got the Illithid Mind Flayer dude on one side. Who is technically freed of their influence and back to his former personality, but his former personality wasn't exactly a good guy. Right? I mean, yeah, okay. When he reverted to his former personality, he did try to make amends, and he was actually like a semi-decent adventurer hero type, so it's something. On the other side, we've got well, the guy in front of us, right? We've got the devil, who wants to, not actually the devil, but a devil, who wants to rule the nine hells. Assuming, of course, that the crown doesn't totally break his brain and destroy him from the inside out, which would admittedly be fun to see. Actually, that'd be kind of interesting. Like, he's taking a gamble here, right? He's assuming that because he's not mortal, he can't fail. That's not necessarily true. He's not a god. He's just a devil. Now, granted, he's a fairly powerful devil who can do several amazing things here. But it doesn't necessarily mean he has the power to wrap his brain around the crown. It's very likely the crown will totally destroy his brain and make him subservient the same way it would, say, the elder brain, right? So this could very well be a death of his own making. Now that's a thought. He could actually just die to this. And it would be his own fault. It wouldn't be our problem. He could very well have his brain crushed in by the crown, and I'm kind of okay with that. Now, the alternative is that he is, in fact, successful, and he does unite the Nine Hells. But again, having the leader of the Nine Hells on a first-name basis might be handy, right? At least we know he's willing to make deals. We can make a deal for Karlak, get out of Mizora's contract, and like various other things that could happen here. Whereas if we don't take the deal, what do we get? The Elder Brain would still be destroyed. We could destroy the crown. Might be helpful, actually, maybe, in the future. Like, it definitely eliminates the problem of a United Nine Hells. That's definitely true. Um, gets us out under the thumb of the Emperor, which is semi-debatable. I mean, like, as soon as we destroy the Elder Brain, that won't actually be a threat anyway. We can just go ahead and get the... Uh, the parasite extracted. Yeah, Lazel's gonna be pissed, but I'm leaning towards no deal. 
too dangerous. I won't stop you. But time is running out. So don't stay away for long. If you see reason, I'll be here waiting. Right up to the moment the world ends. Okay, so theoretically we'd almost come back and say yes. Gail definitely wants to talk to them. I'm interested you just push this back out. Okay, Lizelle wants to talk. Let's talk to Lizelle. The means to loosing the Prince of the Comet was within our grasp, and you refused it. Why? Because it's fucking dangerous? Oh, we could just take the hammer. We could just take the hammer. I mean, there's also a bunch of the other things, right? Don't trust him. Raphael becoming the Archdevil would be really, really bad. I've made enough double deals for one lifetime, and all those are true. But also, what if we just go to the House of Hope and take it? I wanted to follow the open valley, the easy way out. You chose the bramble path. I'm annoyed by it. And I admire you for it. We must speak with Voss. Then we find our way to Raphael's House of Hope. We'll take the Orphic Hammer and use it to smash the true heir's bonds. Yisk Githkar Tafki crash it. The Githyanki will be free. Okay, that's actually a really cool idea, and that could work. That could totally work. I don't care if I piss off Raphael. I mean, he's powerful, but we could totally beat him eventually, and it could work. All right, what about you, Gail? So, the devil himself is pursuing the crown. As for whether it's truly the crown Carter's forged, well, I think it's safe to assume we shouldn't take anything Raphael utters at face value. We must claim the crown of Carter's for ourselves. Before anyone else does. Ourselves? That seems like a really bad idea. All right, we need to talk to uh, Lazelle's friend. Oh, okay. There you are. Oh, I thought right. I lost you. Something was blocking me from hearing your thoughts. Yeah, it was the, it was Dick. It was Raphael. Raphael. Well, thank you for your honesty. Of course. I should have known the devil would come sniffing. The stench of impending chaos is irresistible to them. And what did he want with you? Can't you read my brain? You know. Um. Yeah, he wants the crown. Giving a devil what he wants sounds like a brilliant idea. He said sarcastically. And what did he offer you in return for bringing it to him? Well, supposedly the means of free Orpheus. Tell me, you turned him down. No. Oh, well, yeah. Good. I am glad. But be careful. The devil is like a cockroach. No matter what you do to it, it will always come back. I doubt this will be the last time you are approached. I trust that you will continue to remember who is really on your side. Without my protection, you cannot defeat the Elder Brain. You cannot even get close to it, no matter what the devil whispers in your ear. Well, and that's what I was wondering, too. Like, is that actually... Does the devil actually offer any kind of solution to that at all? There's no real guarantee, right? Uh, what's with the circling lights here? I mean, we can definitely open this up. Do we need to, we do need to go downstairs. Well, let me just open this up real quick. Okay, great. That was great. Thank you. No worries. Is there anything in here we need to worry about? Nymph's Grotto. Not the renowned drow we were told about, for sure. I guess these women would be naked if not for the setting we had. Tell me, am I beautiful? More than beautiful. You are the aurora stretched across the north skies. You are the golden dunes swept across the Kalim. 
Hmm. Someone took their you potion of glibness the this morning. Of the forbidden palm. Soft on my skin. Sweet on my tongue. You are my sin. And salvation. And then we walk in. Sorry, your door should be really better locked. Your parasite stirs, and you gaze at the nymph through the flaming fist's hungry eyes. Your muscles shiver with her longing. Your skin burns with her heat. What's... What's wrong, Jara? What are you... Wait. I know you. Uh-oh. Can't be good. You aren't safe. Get out of here now. I don't understand. What's... Now she's about to turn. Your face. The Absolute has shown me. Jara, what's going on? Who's this man? Gather. Prepare. Because... Your head screams in agony. The change has come. Pustules boiling beneath your skin, your bones twisting, your flesh rupturing. And suddenly, silence. What's happening? Well, welcome to the birth of an elephant. And we fight. Okay. Alright. Uh, Lazelle first. Alright, because she can't be surprised. So, yeah. Just go in there and bonk him. I will Her. No it. They. I'm not sure how they're supposed to go, really. Uh, bonk her again. Good bonks, good bonks. Is it worth the action surge? I think instead we'll go ahead and do a pommel strike. The daze is actually pretty good. That was great. Okay, good. Battle favors the fearless. Then go in here and Pope probably want to do a. Let's do the defensive flourish here. Yeah, with the bardic inspiration, I like it. Might will prevail. Nice. Actually, if we can poke him one more time, he might just die to this. There we go. Easy, no problems. So, um, you okay there? I mean, we should loot the body. Ruby be a ring, add to wares. Uh, hello? Okay, I want to talk to you. Hello. Hells. I'd heard tales of mind flayers. Talons sharp as daggers and tentacles yet more fearsome. But no tail did justice to its ethereal beauty. It floats like a butterfly. Its blood shimmers like silver. Are you on drugs? Are you actually literally on drugs? The thing could have killed you. You're musing on its beauty? How could I help it? I don't regret its death. But I marvel that such a work of art could ever live. Her gaze intensifies. Your breath quickens. Okay, nymphs are a completely different beast altogether, beat. apparently. The woman's senses are heightened and her fire stoked. The mind flare is no mere curiosity, but an object of desire. Okay then, well, I'm not one to judge, but desire in an extra planar being like that is peculiar. No desire is peculiar. It is instinct, and instinct never lies. Instinct lies all the time. But perhaps there are other flavors that might satisfy my palate. With the dead lithid on your floor. No, you give me a few coins instead. <laughs> I offer something rarer than coins. But does it spend as well? Rapture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Close your eyes and listen. No, I think we're going to go now. Thanks. The gods themselves cannot grant you my unimaginable bliss. Refuse it once, and you will be left forever wanting. Or I'll wake up tomorrow and completely forget you even existed. And honestly, that sounds more likely. Then a part of you remains forever empty, yet keenly felt. An ultimate unknowing beyond your grasp. At least take these. 
May you have at least some comfort in bitter times. I won't forget you. And you won't forget me. What do we get? Don't even know what that is. Don't even know what that is. What did we just get? Um, don't see it as a star item. Unless I'm missing it, but I don't see it. We have a lot of books and whatnot. But the potion she get. Oh, there it is. There it is. I see it. This thing right here. The lecture of Arcane Cultivation. Oh, uh, I hand that over to Gail. I'll need that. Okay. Well, we rescued her, so that's good at least. Though I guess she wasn't in any danger until we showed up, right? So, kind of two sides of a coin there. Okay, Lazels. Uh, boss, here we go. Kithric boss, here we go. Let's talk to him. Voss, friend to the comet. Lazel of Kalir, warrior of warriors. Tell me you took the devil's deal. Tell me you will free Gith's heir. Well, about that. I'm not interested in pacting with devils, Voss. I mean, looks to the contrary and warlock to the contrary. That's not normally what we like to do. Shkaketh! Orpheus will be free. There is no cost too high to unshackle my people. How about the entire mortal realm? I mean, come on. Yeah, who Raphael wants a powerful crown in trade. Who knows what chaos he might sow? No more than Vlakith will sow in Tunarath and beyond. No more than the Geich will sow across every plain. There is nothing I won't do, nothing I won't give to free Orpheus from the prison. The marks I bear are proof enough of that. Got two but you, small scars. You are the one who carries the astral prism. You are the one who must free the prince. Find a way to retrieve the hammer and free Orpheus from the prism. I will assemble his remaining honor guard and plan our next actions. Together, we will yet free the true heir of Gith's blessed empire. He will free us from Vlakith and lead our Kithraki against the Geich. Is Dick. I will wait in the underground. Seek me when you have the hammer in hand. And we know exactly where he keeps it. He keeps it at home. He keeps it in the House of Hope. Orpheus sets a tadpole before and his guard attacked. When he attack will we free him? The Prince of the Comet aches for Gith Yankee liberation more than he abhors Geich. Does he though? He might seethe when you free him. He might gnash his teeth and slander your name. But he will see reason. I promise you. Because that's what Gith are known for, is their reasoning abilities. Alright, let's see if his story lines up with Raphael's. A devil of Raphael's stature does not simply make camp on the shores of the Styx. He will have made a sanctuary for himself, a lavish one too, one that caters to his many vices. The House of Hope. We must find a way in. The House of Hope, you say? I couldn't ask for a name more fitting. Every house has an entrance, Istik. Even those in the Hells. You must find it. You are wasting your time, and mine. Our true enemy is the Elder Brain. Focus your mind there. I don't know. We could maybe do both. It could happen. We'll see how this goes. I mean, there's no guarantee we free Orpheus, but it's not a horrible idea to do it because Gethard Cross is right. I mean, it would be kind of nice to free the Gith as well. But sometimes you can't have your cake and eat it too. For right now, thanks for watching. This has been Baldur's Gate 3. I'm Peace Universe here, Peace Universe 2, and I'll see you guys next time.